This is the Transformers Generations Legacy United Deluxe Class Rescue Bots Chase. I picked up this figure from my local. This figure is part of the first wave of Deluxe Class figures for the Transformers United line, the third installment in the Legacy series of Generations figures. And this figure is actually looking pretty good. I was expecting it to be a very horrible, horrible figure that it was going to be too small, too flimsy, and I was going to hate it, but it's not bad. Both robot mode and car mode seem to be looking pretty nice, very impressive. Uh, I have an issue with the transformation. Transformation isn't the, the most enjoyable of transformation, but we'll talk about that later. Let's take a closer look at the details of this new Transformers Legacy United Deluxe Class Rescue Bots Chase. Head to toe, the figure stands at about 13 centimeters tall or about 5 and 1 8 inches tall. So the figure comes with several accessories. His main accessory is his Energon claw, which you can, you can have him hold. But on the show, uh, the rescue bots, their weapons sort of like materialize out of nowhere. They like energize. It could be, it could be like a winch. Or in Heatwave's case, it could be his fire hose. But in Chase's case, most of the time, it's a claw or some handcuffs. Sometimes it's a winch. I mean, it's kind of ridiculous. They can do anything. It's like a Green Lantern's power ring. But uh, they can produce whatever weapon they feel uh, they need at the moment. And it just materializes on their hands. And for Chase, it's a claw. So you can have it on either hand. I think that's what the hinge for the wrist is for, so you can easily attach uh, the accessory. It would be nice if you had another one, like a winch or a hook, uh, but that's that. Okay, you can plug the weapon, store it on any 5mm port that he has on him. Now, he does come with a couple of other accessories, which are on his forearms. You have his flashlight, or at least he uses this most of the time as his flashlight. Uh, you can remove it if you want to. You can have him hold it in his hand. Same thing on, with this one. This one is, uh, I think this is his bullhorn or megaphone. You can hold it on either hand as well. But on the show, uh, the these accessories are mostly on his, uh, on his forearms. And even in car mode, they're actually stuck on the side of the doors. So... I think for accuracy, we should just keep them on the forearms. As far as the overall aesthetic of the figure is, I mean, it's it's a very Generation-styled, obviously, Generation-styled figure. Because on the show, he had disproportioned limbs, big arms, big legs. Even the light bar was, like, huge. It was, like, sitting on top of his shoulder. It was huge like that. Now they've kind of shrunk it. But the overall aesthetic is still loyal and faithful to the original rescue bot, I, sh I should say. Uh, his head sculpt is huge. It is disproportionately huge, as such is the case with most of the rescue bots on the show. Uh, they're kind of kiddie robots, so yeah. Uh, it's a it's a nice head sculpt, though. Uh, I'm, I'm surprised they went with the visor, because on the show, most of the time, he's like, he's like he's wearing some sunglasses, and you could see his pupils through uh, the glasses or the lenses. Uh, but I guess this is the generation styled version of Chase and as such the visor they deemed was more appropriate uh, The Autobot logo is a standard Autobot logo on his chest not the rescue bots logo with a circle Like the seal uh, the police seal or a fire fire chief seal So they kind of changed that would have been nice if they had kept the original logo uh, but uh, Yeah, maybe we'll see that more in later releases it's got some clear plastic right here for the chest. Amber colored plastic painted with white and blue. Not too bad. I thought it was pretty sturdy. There's nothing to complain about plastic quality for this figure. The cheapest parts are probably the hood and fender of the front part of the car. That's probably the... That's the only thing I can see where it's kind of not premium. But it is still pretty solid, pretty tough. 
Uh, and even the parts where you'd expect it to be soft and flimsy, they're not. So kudos to Hasbro for spending some money on plastic quality on this figure because it is a very, very solid figure. There's nothing to hate about plastic quality for this guy. As far as articulation goes, the neck is on a ball joint, but limited in motion because of the sculpt. The arms, they, they're on hinges, they allow you to go in and out. You slide them up and down because of transformation, but not really part of articulation. There's a swivel, allow you to move it, rotate it forward and backward. There's a bicep swivel, hinge elbow that would seem to be a ratcheting, pseudo ratcheting elbow, but it's not. The wrists go in and out, no idea why. Uh, it's not because of transformation, it's quite possibly maybe due to uh, the weapon attachment. There is a waist swivel. The hips are on hinges, allow you to do the splits, go forward and backwards. You got a thigh swivel, hinge knees, and the rocker tilt. As far as paint apps go, I actually love it. Uh, the navy blue, dark navy blue paint matches the the paint that they ha he has on the shoulders, and to a certain extent, even matches the pseudo glossy uh, navy blue plastic that they've molded the legs in. Uh, white paint kind of matches the forearms. It's, it, they've done a good job in matching the paint colors. So yeah, fantastic. No complaints for me. For some size comparison, in robot mode, here is Chase with the Earthrise of Silver Streak or Blue Streak, as well as the Worlds Collide Buzzworthy Bumblebee Deluxe Class. Bumblebee in the Cliff Jumper mold. So he's amazingly as tall as a standard sized deluxe class figure. I honestly thought he would be much smaller, but he, he's right there. He's about the size of a regular sized generations deluxe class figure. And now for the dreaded transformation. Transformation is pretty horrible, but I'll do my best to show it off for you guys. Okay, uh, first remove the weapon, put it off to the side. You can keep the flashlight and megaphone on his forearm since that's their work. That's, where they're going to be in car mode anyway. Okay, flip open the chest to give you enough clearance to move up the entire torso up and over his head. But just before you reach the, uh, the light bar, you wanna go ahead and start closing the, that roof part and finally complete the transformation of the torso that way. Okay, and then what you wanna do is you wanna raise the shoulders up terms of the robot mode these wings are just so annoying uh sorry i forgot to mention it earlier but i wish they could have moved further up like this but uh they really hinder posability but you know it is what it is okay so the arms are just going to stay right there okay now for the legs these legs are probably the most difficult part of the transformation okay what you want to do is you want to open up the side part of the leg and flip down that entire leg assembly same thing here, do that. You want to rotate the knees outwards. You can already see that there are tabs here that interlock later on. Go ahead and open up the leg panels all the way so you can rotate the feet inward and tab them in. It's not the prettiest transformation, but you know it is what it is. Fold up the heel spur. Go ahead and do that. Fold the heel spur. I, I, I get what they're trying to do. They're trying to make the feet as accurate as possible. So they had to find a way to move the parts of the car all around so that the feet would look like how he did in the show, but okay. Anyway, fold up and line up the feet. Go ahead and tab them together. Tab the inner legs together. You should get something like this. Headlights are gonna fold down. I thought that was pretty cool. Okay, and then this entire assembly, or the legs at least, you're gonna swivel them up and around. And you see these notches right here at the bottom of the windshield. They are supposed to go uh, right there on those, I guess those flat pegs. So what you wanna do is you wanna squeeze that hood inside, shoot it underneath, uh, sorry, squeeze the underside of the windshield and shoot it underneath the hood or the scoop and it should stay flush and flat like that um, 
it's a little complex. I don't know why they had to make it that complex. On the show, it was just, I mean, very simple, straightforward, but they had to make it generation style complicated. Okay. So here we go. Uh, you want to fold the arms and the fists are going to shoot right there. These pegs right here, they're going to tab onto the thigh or the knees, I should say. And then everything's supposed to line up and just squeeze in and tab. And then these bits, probably again, a difficult part of the step of the transformation. You're going to fold the DeLorean doors, <laughs> kind of squeeze those small, tiny pegs in between those slots right there on the rear side of the door. And once you've done that, you should end up with something like this. This is Chase's car mode. And it looks like a muscle car. It looks like a Charger or a Mustang or a cross between the two. Uh, yeah, just like on the show, he's he was a very thick muscle police car. But here, I think they did a good job in turning him into a generation styled figure. Looks okay. I actually do like how the blue matches the paint with the uh, plastic. Yeah, not bad. Uh, if you do it properly, his uh, mushroom peg wheels should roll seamlessly. You can hear something scratching on the ground and it's not because of these uh, bits right here scraping the floor. It's really because of the mushroom pegs not allowing the wheels to roll as seamlessly as you know, it had it been a uh, rivets or screws or whatever. So yeah, okay, it rolls okay. And then the claw will sit right there. If you want, you can have it here so you can go and drive and arrest Decepticons and bad guys like that. You can also put it here. If he's like towing somebody, but uh, the official place to put it is right here. And there you go. Chase in his muscle police car and for comparison in alt mode here is legacy chase with a bunch of with a couple of other deluxes uh this one is kingdom tracks this one is earthrise run amok all you see it'll be much smaller than the earthrise figures earthrise were i feel the standard for deluxes but kingdom figures they got smaller and smaller and you can clearly see he is still much smaller than a kingdom figure he's not super small like as small as a like a cliff jumper or bumblebee but he is somewhere in the middle of that so he's he's somewhere in between the the small size deluxe and the medium size deluxe but clearly still out of scale he he's kind of in scale with tracks but not really and so some final thoughts on this legacy united chase or rescue bot chase it's actually not a terrible figure in fact, it's actually pretty good. Uh, the transformation was a little horrible, uh, to be honest. I did not enjoy that. But the aesthetics of the robot mode and even to a certain extent the car mode, they really look good. I think the design team did a wonderful job in migrating the rescue bot aesthetic into Generations format. Uh, but with all that being said, uh, my question really is, why do we even have a rescue bot in the generations line i get what they're trying to do with the legacy line they're trying to put all uh the multiverse of transformers uh, all the universes in one universe they're gonna put all the animated shows the cartoons the movies and all that all in one uh, sub line or toy line i get that logic i just don't see the point of doing rescue bots at this time uh, they could have easily gone with other characters from Energon, maybe from Cybertron, uh, maybe maybe more from Animated and all that, which I know they're doing. Uh, dare I say more G1? I do want more G1 figures, but Rescue Bots was a weird choice for me. But despite that, I think they did a wonderful job with this figure. My biggest complaint, like I said, is the transformation. Uh, it's it's I love the involved transformation. I love the engineering that went through it. I just feel like they over engineered the transformation a little bit too much. Uh, they could have made it a lot simpler and a lot more enjoyable. So 
you know, transformation is probably going to be a 6 out of 10 for me. But both modes uh, have amazing designs and both modes clearly will get a 9 out of 10. So if you average that out, huh, he should get somewhere between a 7.5 and, and an 8 out of 10. So let's be generous. We're going to give this figure an 8 out of 10. I was expecting it to be small, flimsy, and really just an unsatisfactory figure. I did not expect it to be not horrible to be actually pretty good. So in this entire wave, if you're thinking of skipping this figure, sure, not really into the rescue bots. Yeah, you can skip this figure, wait for it to go on clearance or whatever. But if you're really into the legacy line, you're collecting all these generation figures, you might want to give this figure a second look. It might even surprise and impress you. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think of this Transformers Legacy United Deluxe Class Rescue Bot Chase. Hit that notification bell so you never miss out on any of my latest video reviews. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.